So welcome everyone to today's webinar. I want to thank everyone for joining here today. We are joined today by Think Labs uh, and of course brought to you by Zoom as well. So uh, before we get things started here, I want to point out a couple of things. Uh, we are using our webinar platform to host today's webinar. So if you happen to have any questions during the webinar, go ahead and click on the Q&A icon. You're going to see that Q&A panel pop up on your screen. You can type in your question in the space provided. Click on the send button. We'll be able to see that here on our end. We'll open up for Q&A uh, toward the end of the webinar. So uh, feel free to submit your questions. You can also submit your questions uh, anonymously as well. Uh, so on today's agenda, we're going to do just some quick introductions of our presenters. Uh, and then from there, we'll jump into the Zoom uh, healthcare offering. And then from there, we'll have Think Labs uh, health uh, care offering. And then from there, we'll kind of talk about how we work together. And then we'll open it up for Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, send them in through the Q&A. Uh, we'll try and answer as many questions as possible. And as I mentioned, uh, we'll be recording today's webinar. So be on the lookout for that uh, in a follow-up email. Uh, so today uh, we have our presenters. So we are joined by our very own uh, Mike Johnson, uh, Zoom Solutions Architect. Uh, he's in Collaboration Sales, Enterprise, and Health to be specific. Uh, we're also joined by Clyde Smith, Think Labs CEO and designer of Think Labs One. So welcome everyone. Uh, 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 thanks for uh, joining in, uh, here in today's webinar. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, kick things over to Mike uh, to go ahead and uh, take over. So Mike, take it away. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let me just pull that up real quick. Yeah, so uh, just to kind of get started, uh, you know, I, I'm assuming that everyone here uses Zoom at this point. Uh, if not, the quickest way for me to describe what Zoom is to everyone is actually it's what we did is we actually married together the best of what web collaboration was together with video collaboration. Uh, so we took the two, we married them together, and we made a collaboration port, um, a platform that really just brings together the best of both worlds uh, and really gives you a solid offering uh, to do any web-based and video-based type of collaboration. Um, we actually just had an announcement earlier this week that we actually have a healthcare uh, offering for Zoom now. And what that really means is we pretty much took the packaging of what we had for Zoom, we put it all together, and we called it Zoom for Healthcare. Uh, it, part of this is uh, the HIPAA compliance that we have when we sign a BAA. So, uh, you know, we do those BAA agreements uh, so we can all become HIPAA compliant. Um, and, you know, just kind of going down the bullet points there, single solution for enterprise, engineer to optimize to work in real liability. So the one, th the one good thing I'll pull out from here is uh, the, the work reliability. Our, since we are a software-based company, uh, basically what, we are, what we've done is we've created such a software that works so reliably over the public internet. Uh, and this is actually something that's very important to note, uh, as Zoom is actually, when it comes to actually marrying together what we can offer uh, in, the, in the cloud uh, to actually reach every single customer, every single business, every single patient, uh, we can do that reliably over any type of network that you actually uh, run Zoom on. Uh, we do the integrations. We have uh, a new uh, EHR integration. Uh, we also have that Epic integration. So everyone with Epic and uh, Zoom now officially supports Epic. We do have a formal integration that we've worked on with Epic. Uh, and finally, it's the, the easy to use buy and scale. The, the important part out of this is actually the ease of use. When you're dealing with patients or anything in the medical world, we want to make sure that we have a platform that's easy to use. And that's what Zoom actually accomplishes the best out of every, every provider that's out there. Uh, the two biggest compliments I always get is it's easy to use, or uh, sorry, not as easy to use. It's It just works and it just works. And I realize those are actually two different compliments said exactly the same way. One is it just works, right? So when someone goes to actually launch the meeting and actually be inside of a meeting, it was just one click. They were able to download the app and actually just go straight into the meeting. So it just works. The other is it just works because once they're in the meeting, the meeting actually just runs stably the entire time that they're in there. So when you're talking to a patient, uh, another business, a doctor, a nurse, whoever it may be, you always know you always know that you have the confidence of having the best platform on the market to actually make that easy to work, uh, so it doesn't get in the way of what your job actually is. The product suite actually ranges from many different platforms, uh, many different. Um, 
many different types of programs that we could use. So, you know, first we have the meetings, which meetings is a lot like webinars. So right now you're an attendee. You actually are being able to see that meet, the, the slide show up in front of you. You're able to hear me, uh, but you aren't able to speak. So the big difference between webinar and meetings is in a, in a meeting, you actually are able to, to join with us up in here and uh, be able to actually communicate with us, chat with us, talk with us, share your video with us as well. So that's a big part of the meetings application. The instant messaging is actually the other part to this. We actually do have that I am feature. So many different times, you know, you have different users uh, all over, whether on a mobile device, a desktop device, uh, wherever they may be, they're actually able to communicate over instant messaging. The video webinar, which you're on right now, the Zoom rooms, so we do have a room-based uh, software kit av available, the 323 and SIP connector. And I like to take a little bit of time just to kind of elaborate that a little bit more and why it really means something to healthcare. A lot of healthcare units uh, or companies uh, do actually have some type of H323 or SIP-based systems. Um, we don't want to you know, come in with Zoom and say, you know, we, we want to restrict uh, what endpoints can actually join in. We want to find a way to actually bring those endpoints into our meetings. So we can do that and we could do that very effectively. So that that base, uh, you know, what, what units you may be using in your company for H323 and SIP can actually dial straight into these meetings. And what's most important about that is we can actually far end camera control those devices. So if I were to click on that actual uh, SIP or 323 device that was in the meeting, I could actually move the camera around from my end. I don't have to have someone else move the camera for me. We could do that from a meeting platform too. So even if I'm in that room with two, three, four, five, ten different people, we can still control that camera. And finally, the developer platform, which really what that means to you at the end of the day is uh, that Epic integration, being able to develop between Epic and Zoom and make that work flawlessly, uh, fluidly, uh, so it doesn't get in the way of your actual primary work. So what features do we have when it comes to uh, the Zoom platform um, as we look at the healthcare industry? Uh, a couple different ones that we can actually pull right from here. The top one is the HIPAA compliance. I, you know, that's just a that's just something that I believe everyone should uh, fully expect at this point from a health from a from a web collaboration provider. The second one is the dual camera. So right now you're able to see me. I'm presenting, uh, and you see my content on the screen. So you see that PowerPoint in front of you. Uh, you can read it. You can see my video. It's all fluid. What we can actually do is sharing that PowerPoint presentation, now I can share a secondary device. So that means if I have a secondary camera, maybe an exam room camera, uh, you know, something that can look at the skin, uh, anything along those lines, we can actually feed that through while still seeing our original video. So now I can look at the patient and see what the other camera that might be looking at a patient's ear at the exact same time. Uh, now, if a nurse is doing something that I could kind of correct her and just say like, oh yeah, just lift it up just a little bit more for me because I could actually see her and what she's doing with the patient, I can actually have that control and capability for having two cameras at the exact same time. Uh, obviously, the firing camera control and digital stethoscopes, that's an interesting one. I think we'll hear a little bit about that a little bit later in this presentation too. <laughs> um, so uh, screen share in the telehealth app. So yes, we do screen share. Uh, we can even screen share on the, the iPhone and the iPad as well as your mobile device as well. Patient rating room is a new one as well. When someone actually joins the meeting, we actually can actually, we will actually put them into a waiting room directly. So that means uh, if I'm in the meeting, someone tries to join my meeting, it alerts me and says this person's in the waiting room. I have to explicitly let that person into my meeting. This way, if I'm in a meeting and it's a very confidential part of that meeting, I'm not allowing you know possibly a nurse or someone else in at that exact moment. They're always going to be placed on hold until I allow them into that room, as well as being able to put that person on hold. So if I'm in there with the nurse, uh, the doctor and the nurse and the patient are all in the room at the exact same time, the doctor could put the patient on hold and actually have a conversation with the nurse uh, and then actually bring that patient back into the meeting. Uh, the low bandwidth environments is actually a, a crucial one as well. When we actually go out to rural areas and using your cellular network for actually being able to have these meetings, we want to make sure that it always works. And that was part of the it just works uh, comment. No matter what the person was using as their, their media to get to the internet, it was just working for them. The interoperate with telehealth carts, so if you have those SIP and 323 endpoints, that's where it communicates. And finally, integrate with EHR. So that epic integration and being able to actually be actually embedded into the software uh, is a lot of what we're, we, we have some of that now and we're only expanding that as time goes on. All right, and from there, I think Clive, I'm gonna be passing it off to you.
Oh, no, just one last thing. So this is Zoom Healthcare customers. So this is just kind of an, uh, an overview of what customers we currently have using the Zoom platform. All right, and I'll stop sharing there. And Clive, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Okay, folks, welcome. I'm Clive Smith, and I am the CEO at Think Labs, and I developed the Think Labs one. Uh, can you all hear me? Good. Yeah. So just some background on um, our company. Um, we've been in stethoscope business. I've been in the stethoscope business for 21 years, uh, researching. Uh, we spent eight years doing R&D before we got into the market. So essentially, we did not get into the market until that we felt that we had something that was a significantly uh, a significant contribution to improving the sound of stethoscopes. And we got into the market to improve the clinical stethoscope. So we weren't looking to just make another telemedicine accessory um, and say, oh, well, anybody, you know, as long as we can communicate over the internet with a stethoscope, that's a stethoscope. We were pursuing the goal of having something that would be a superior device, even on a face-to-face -face, uh, encounter with the patient. So we had a very high standard that we were looking to achieve. Uh, we've been in the market itself for 13 years. Uh, we had a previous model, the DS32, that many of you may be familiar with. And then three years ago, we came out with the Think Labs 1, which you see in your screen. And it uh, has a very different form factor. Uh, we decided that we were really going to revolutionize what the stethoscope is and how compact it can be. We basically have been in the market, as I say, for a number of years. Um, and basically, we have enough stethoscopes out there that every 1.5 milliseconds, this is an estimate, every 1.5 milliseconds, somebody somewhere in the world uses a ThinkLab stethoscope. So... Um, basically, people are really getting a lot of experience, and we've got a lot of experience working with customers to get the very best sound. Uh, we were also very pleased to see that the Think Labs 1 was in more carts and kits than any other stethoscope at the ATA uh, this last week. Uh, we just noticed, and we, were, we saw as people reported to us that essentially we have really become integrated into a lot of systems, and so we are very, very excited uh, to be working with Zoom uh, on this integration. Um, in terms of what the uh, Think Labs One has to offer, um, essentially, basically, as I said, our claim to fame is our sound quality. We developed a patented sensor technology which picks up the sound at the diaphragm. There are a number of stethoscopes on the market which will use a microphone inside um, inside a stethoscope in order to pick up the sound and our diaphragm is actually our sensor so we pick up the sensor the, the sensed sound directly off the body uh, we make the product ourselves in the United States um, and basically we use a 3.5 millimeter connection so that we're a very open type of stethoscope we take a very open approach to things we want you to be able to connect it to any system very easily uh, we've, we take a very open approach to things. We're not looking to own uh, the world in terms of requiring you to use anything proprietary from us. Uh, we reinvented the stethoscope. We're not looking to reinvent the wheel. Um, in terms of integration, we integrate directly into Zoom's audio channel. So when you use a ThinkLab stethoscope with Zoom, as I'll show you in a little bit, you basically use the audio channel inside Zoom and you stay inside Zoom. There's no need to log into some separate app. So the workflow is much more seamless when you're using a ThinkLab stethoscope inside Zoom because you're inside the Zoom environment and the ThinkLab stethoscope is just treated as another microphone. Um, the result of this is that the cost of ownership is very, very good because you buy the stethoscope, you own the stethoscope. It is another piece of hardware, another device it hooks into your system and there are no subscription fees, there are no special apps, there's no annual license, you just use it. Um, to explain to you how this, um, 
how and why this works so well with Zoom, I thought it would be worthwhile to essentially show you um, basically why it's important to consider the entire end-to-end -end solution. So what I've shown here is I've shown the stethoscope on one end and a set of headphones on the other end. And every single piece of that matters. Um, if you look at the stethoscope, I've discussed that and I've discussed our technology and our sensor and we are picking the sound straight off the human body with very, very high fidelity. The next piece to your right is um, if you look over, um, the next piece is encoding the signal, which is done inside Zoom. Now, encoding the signal is extremely important. You're taking this stethoscope sound and you cannot encode it the way you would a voice signal. So what we've done is we've worked with Zoom to encode the signal with a clean channel that takes the faithful uh, sound from the heart or the lungs and does an encoding that's not going to lose quality or do anything strange to the signal. Now this is different from voice communication. When you're using voice, Zoom is processing the voice in such a way that it's enhancing your experience as a user. They're doing noise cancelling, they're reducing noise in the room, they're eliminating echo. There are all sorts of things that are desirable in a voice communication platform which are not desirable in a stethoscope sound because you really want the stethoscope just to be processed and transmitted. Um, the next piece in the chain from ENCODE is transmission. So you've got the reliable transmission uh, that Michael was talking about in terms of Zoom's um, you know, solution and their communications channel and the reliability of Zoom as a communications platform. And then when you get to the doctor side, you have to decode that signal. And obviously the decode is the complementary function to the ENCODE and it's designed in this platform to decode the signal in such a way that what you get back is what you put in at the, at the front end. And then finally, it's very important for you to use headphones. Get your doctors to use headphones. They use headphones when they use a normal stethoscope. It goes in their ears. There's a reason. There's an enormous amount of bass in a stethoscope signal, and you cannot get that out of laptop loudspeakers. So when we do the demo, um, I would urge you to use headphones. If you're not using headphones, you will not be able to hear very well because of the level of bass that's in a stethoscope sound. So that's how we integrate with Zoom into this end-to-end -end solution. and Every piece of it is critically important. Um, so I'm now going to basically walk you through showing you the workflow to show you how easy it is to essentially switch over between the conversation that the patient might be having with the doctor where the microphone on the patient end is actually a microphone as we would be using now. You then switch over and the stethoscope becomes the microphone and then the doctor is listening to the patient's heart and then at the end of the auscultation or the examination of the patient, the doctor is going to want the patient to switch back. So we, we're talking on a voice mic, we switch over to the stethoscope, the doctor listens to the patient and then switches back to the voice mic. I will note that throughout that period of time, the patient can always hear the doctor. The channel from the doctor to the patient is always on. So the doctor can always tell the patient or the caregiver or the nurse to move the stethoscope to different locations. But the doctor, he or she, is listening to the patient and listening to either microphone or stethoscope. Um, essentially, the way it works is, this would be your Zoom screen and the controls are on the left-hand side. And what you do is it's a three-step process. It's three clicks and it takes basically two seconds to switch over. The first thing to do is to switch the, is to click on the menu which brings up your, your audio control menu. So that brings that up and the default would be that the patient's uh, microphone voice mic is on. The next step is to select the USB input to which the stethoscope is connected. So just to clarify that the stethoscope uh, we recommend is connected into a separate audio USB device. Um, I have something here which basically is an audio technica device. You can contact us for more information. It's about $10. So the next step is to connect into the USB audio to switch over and the stethoscope now becomes the microphone. And finally, what happens is we switch over and we get a clean sound transmission. As I have explained to you, uh, we don't want the voice transmission, which has all sorts of enhancement. We just want clean sound so that we have a very clear signal. 
So, to re so basically what we have then is we then have the stethoscope, the doctor can talk to the patient and listen to the stethoscope. So just to go over that one more time, it's three clicks basically, bring up the menu, select the microphone, as a, the stethoscope as a microphone, and turn on the sound that you, ha that you want to get clean sound, one, two, three. Now, when the doctor is done and wants to talk to the patient again or have the patient talk to the doctor, it's just a reverse step, very simple. You go back to uh, bringing up your menu, you bring up the menu, so you select the built-in microphone instead, the stethoscope fades out of the picture, you're now talking to the, the patient can now talk to the doctor, and you turn on the voice sound enhancement again, again, one, two, three, and just to reiterate, now you have two-way communication, so, Step one, step two, step three. It takes about two seconds. So two seconds to switch one way, two seconds to switch the other way. Um, just to give you some idea, basically we do have a few good customers. Uh, it takes a number of customers to get uh, one stethoscope to be used every 1.5 milliseconds. So this gives you some idea of some of the people who are uh, using our device and some of the people who are talking our device, uh, talking about our device. We actually uh, won a, um, we were a finalist in medical design and we got a good design award as well, which we have actually haven't listed on the slide, from the uh, Chicago Art Museum. Um, we're now going to do a live demo, and so if you all can put on headphones, and I'm now going to switch over, if you'll excuse me, and um, stop sharing my screen. So we're now going to do the demo, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the uh, stethoscope on, and what I'll do is I'll be switching over um, from the built-in mic or the microphone on my headset as the source of audio to the stethoscope as a source of audio, um, which is the first thing I'll do, which is on the USB input. And then what I'll do is I'll turn on original sound which gives you the clear channel that Zoom provides for you to listen to the stethoscope. I would urge you, when you're listening to the stethoscope portion, turn up your volume and wear earbud headphones or good headphones. You will not hear these sounds clearly using regular loudspeakers. So when examining patients, you definitely want to use headphones when you're listening. So now turn up your volume and put on headphones in order to listen to what I'm going to play with you now. And I will now switch over to the stethoscope and I'll play you a few different sounds. I'll play you um, the heart sound in two different places and I'll also do a breath sound. And uh, what I'd like to also do is in the heart sound, when I move the stethoscope up, I will breathe in. So for those of you who are clinically inclined, you'll hear the split of the second heart sound clearly as well. And we're back. So that gives you some idea of how I was able to switch over to the stethoscope. I presume that you were all able to hear. 
Uh, if the moderators can nod in the affirmative, I'll know that you could hear me. And the other thing that's worth pointing out is that, in fact, the caregiver or the patient can listen on a set of headphones on the near end so that the caregiver can actually listen to the patient's heart at the same time. So the person with the patient or the patient can listen to their heart while they're actually uh, sending the sound to the doctor. And uh, I would say that is pretty much it. Um, so back over to you guys, uh, Michael, if you'd like to just take over. I will just add that basically you can contact us for any um, information in terms of the technical details of connections, uh, recommended USB, recommended headphones. Uh, we also have a demo program where you can contact us and you can um, uh, work with us and we can send you a demo unit. You can try it in your own system. You can have your clinicians use it. And um, the one thing I would uh, emphasize to you is that um, a stethoscope is something that is really worthwhile for your clinicians to test. Um, and that is where we feel that our integration with Zoom has really you know, scored a lot of accolades with people is when the clinicians actually listen and they hear the quality of the sound of this integrated solution. Um, we, we encounter a very high level of satisfaction. So uh, I'd like to thank the people at Zoom. Uh, this has been a, a two-year cooperative project to really do this and deliver this well. And we're very excited to move forward. Contact us for any further information. And we work with you uh, providing very close support. A lot of telemedicine systems are unique and we really work hard with you to make sure that you're satisfied with what you have and that you're getting exactly what you need. So please reach out to us uh, for demo programs, for customer support, for detailed questions. We're happy to speak to you. We're happy to speak to your clinicians. And uh, over to the Zoom folks at this point. So Clive, there were a couple of questions that did come in. Um, maybe we could take a peek at those real quick. One was just okay. asking, uh, how much do these Cisco's uh, retail for? Uh, and where besides the US are they used? Uh, very good question. So the, the list price is $4.99. Um, if you are working in a system where you're rolling out um, larger quantities, we can work with you and we can discuss um, pricing programs with you. Um, and um, as you increase your volumes, uh, we can work with you and if you are doing very large-scale deployments when you get to the point where you're going into the patient's home. We're planning to address that market as well. So um, pricing should not be a reason. We are a, um, a premium device. So our single unit price at 499 um, basically reflects the value of the device um, and the quality of the device. Um, but when you do get to volume uh, deployments, uh, we do work with you to work out on pricing. In terms of where it's being used, um, it's being used uh, a lot across the United States. It's also being used around the world. Uh, we recently got CE Mark, so uh, we are actually expanding into rest of world this year um, with our CE Mark approval. So this is the year that we're actually going international. But interestingly enough, um, a substantial amount of our business has been international anyway. People have purchased them from various countries um, without any marketing on our part and any outreach. We've had a lot of incoming interest. So it's actually on all continents. Um, it's been used everywhere. Um, but we are now really reaching out to international customers. And then there was one last question. Is this especially made for doctors? Is what? Is this especially made for doctors? Is it specially made for doctors? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's made for anyone who's going to listen to the body. Um, you know, it's a high-performance device. Um, so, you know, it is something that a, a doctor should be listening. This is not for patients to make their own diagnosis. So, this must be used in consultation with a doctor. Uh, it's not an over-the-counter device that patients should be purchasing in order to, um, you know, try and make their own diagnoses. It's a professional product. I had a quick question, uh, Clive. Is there, has there been any, 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 like, any specific scenarios where they've been using it? Kind of, uh, you know, any, anything you want to maybe touch on, maybe certain areas of the world they're using it, maybe certain programs people are using it as far as in health 
any specific scenarios, I guess, if you will? Yes. So um, there are programs where it's being used in schools where pediat where um, children's hospitals are have got telemedicine systems in schools. Um, we've got systems in the southeast of the United States where there are rural customers and they're implementing our devices in rural hospitals. Um, it's uh, used in some cases inside hospitals from one section of the hospital to another. Uh, so there have been a lot of different use cases. Um, in Colorado, we've got pulmonology practices where the pulmonology, pulmonology practices in Denver and the doctors don't want to travel up into our mountains uh, to go four hours to go and examine patients. So they do remote exams, um, you know, to, to, uh, to patients who are, you know, further away. Um, and one of the more unusual cases, uh, which you wouldn't really expect, was actually in Ebola, uh, where it was actually used um, because our device using earbud headphones fits inside the protective equipment that was used in Ebola. It was used inside the Ebola room with Ebola patients, and then there was transmissions to the outside world. And in some cases, there would be a transmission where we were just basically transmitting from inside the room, the, the hot zone, to outside of the room or to further afield. But basically, it's a great application where the doctor doesn't have to be exposed to a very dangerous disease and then followed for a few weeks taking their temperature and things like that. And um, so telemedicine can be from a few feet away to, uh, you know, around the world. We've got doctors who are using our device, you know, to remote islands in the, in the Pacific from the United States. So there's, there's been a, a wide range of users. Yeah, like you said, I mean, that's good. It's like, you know, you don't want, you don't, you're not reinventing the wheel, if anything, just kind of uh, embracing the technology side of things. So that's, that's pretty awesome to see because, you know, you can easily have some, a specialist jump on from, you know, a other side of the world, say, hey, we can bring in this specialist doctor, have him, you know, kind of give his own diagnosis. So the, it's pretty awesome to see the technology kind of where it's evolving to. I would imagine, like you said, in schools, um, you know, especially with technology these days, I mean, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, but if you can make it a little bit better, that definitely helps, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, f I really do feel that telemedicine, we don't know, um, you know, when it's going to become more popular than going to see the doctor face to face. Um, but uh, the convenience of telemedicine is going to surpass the inconvenience of going to a hospital uh, in the same way as ordering something off Amazon is very often more convenient than getting in your car and driving to go and look for something um, and having to deal with traffic weather and all sorts of other things. Uh, you know, telemedicine, uh, in my opinion, will be to healthcare what online shopping is to retail and brick and mortar. So uh, I think we're going to be seeing that. And certainly things like, certainly the schools where, you know, the kids don't have to, uh, you know, they can basically bring expert opinions into elementary schools and things like that. Uh, they're, they're just so many use cases. Yeah. And I went ahead and provided the link in the chat window, folks. So if you look in your chat window, let me make sure I have that available for everyone there. You'll see the link to the Think Labs website. I'll send it one more time there. And you'll see that there. And I also provided the Zoom for telehealth link as well, um, you know, so in case you want to take a look at the website. Michael, I'm not sure, maybe you can, I mean, with the hotel health thing, I'm sure you've, there's been, you know, with different customers that we're using, it's kind of, it's, it's definitely growing. I'm sure we're seeing that kind of evolve. Yeah, definitely, especially because of what we can bring to the table, being a software provider, um, you know, we, we really do integrate with pretty much everything out there. And I always say from your cell phone all the way up to an executive boardroom, you can have a meeting with anyone. And because of the software and the way we work with people like Think Labs, uh, you know, we can really create a rich experience uh, that no one else out there can actually do and provide. If anyone else has any questions, feel free to send them in through the Q&A. As I mentioned, we provide those links in the chat window. Um, can also let me. Uh, what I'll do is I'll share that that slide here real quick so that I can bring this up for everyone. We can have this up on the screen as well. Uh, anything else? I'm Clive. I'm not sure if you want to mention anything else. Um, I know we're already past the 30 minute mark here. We scheduled that for 45 yeah. minutes. But if anyone has questions, send them in. But if you want to mention anything else, feel free to jump in. 
Yeah, I would just, I would just, you know, just underline, you know, underline what's on the screen at the moment, which is, uh, contact us. We're happy to work with you. Uh, we work in detail with people in the same way as we on the on the supplier end of things and on the systems and technology end. We, you know, we've we've done deep work with Zoom in order to make this a seamless experience and and give the providers something special. We work with. We work with the end users, we work with the clinicians, we work with the IT people in the hospitals as well to make sure that you're getting what you need. So we really do provide um, a lot of very sort of deep, close support uh, in order to make sure that you're, you're satisfied with what you're doing. Uh, as I said, we have demos and, um, and we work with you and we do want to hear from you. Uh, if you have any questions, any concerns, um, we, we really are ready to help you make sure that this works for you. And, so, and the last thing I would say is also, um, when you're implementing your systems, the smallest thing actually is important. As I showed you on that screen of the end-to-end -end solution, um, the settings are important, the volume settings, the filter settings, the types of headphones you're using. So there's a lot of detailed nuances to get the absolute optimal experience. And we, we really do want to talk to our customers. And, and listen to what you're using and the experiences you're having. And we can really help you to fine tune. Um, if you're having anything less than an absolutely terrific experience, um, you know, we want to hear from you uh, so that we can basically make sure that you're getting everything right. Awesome. I also did see that other question come in. Um, you know, they were talking about other peripherals. Um, don't don't limit yourself in the in the knowledge here. A lot of these uh, different devices that are coming out, for instance, uh, a lot of them like exam room cameras. Um, you know, they're just a USB camera, which means if it if just as a USB camera, it can be integrated directly into our Zoom meeting platform. So any of these devices that are coming out, I've seen microscopes. Uh, you know the stethoscope we were really proud of the stethoscope just because we it took some work to actually get that one right it always just takes work to get that one right too and uh we took the time and really pushed that one forward and we're really proud of that one um you know exam cams but and the, the microscopes you know anything that could be a camera you could definitely import into the meeting anything that could be recognized uh, to your computer uh, it can be ported into the meeting as well. So, you know, any device you see out there, if it's a USB device, if it's a, you know, a headphone jack type of device, you can use that within the Zoom meeting platform. Um, and if you do have more questions, please feel free to reach out to us and we can figure that out. Awesome. Uh, someone had something through the chat that, look at Michael, maybe they want uh, your email address. I don't know if you can see that in the chat. Why don't maybe you can send that directly to uh, Elaine there. If you click on the drop down, then sure. you'll see her. her our message there. Awesome. I think that is about it. Uh, but uh, as we mentioned, yeah, I mean, take advantage of the links in the chat window. Feel free to reach out to us here at Zoom. Obviously, Clive, you know, and team over at Think Labs will be, uh, I mean, from what it sounds like, Clive, you're definitely, you know, listening to the voice of your customers to make sure that they're definitely satisfied with the product the same way we do here at Zoom. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, and well, I've just I've just posted our uh, the best way to get to us is to write to support, um, and we also have a lot of information on our uh, support site. So um, if you go to our website and you go to support, there's a lot of information as well. So great. All right. Well, we'll give you a couple of minutes, folks, uh, back in your day. So, but I do want to thank Clive uh, and Michael for presenting today. Be on the lookout for a follow-up email. We'll make sure to send out a link to the recording. So, be on the lookout for that, and we'll also provide information in there. Uh, you know how to get in contact uh, with Think Labs, and of course, here with us at Zoom. So, having said that, folks, thank you for joining, Clive, Michael. Thank you thank for you. presenting. Thanks very Take much. Care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.